All right, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I've said it before that I think uh, it's just a matter of weeks now before Baghdad falls. Now, there are far smarter military analysts that say that it's very unlikely to happen, impossible to happen, but when I see uh, government troops that uh, outman and outgun insurgents by a factor of 10 to 1, folding like cheap suits in the wake of these insurgents, I just think it's a matter of time. So unless they get some help, game over. This is another Vietnam. And uh, historian Jane Hampton Cook tells me that that wasn't too great at the time for that president, Gerald Ford, and it was something that hung over him. Uh, even though he wasn't responsible for it, it was just a culmination of what had been uh, years of misguided policy under Democrat and Republican presidents. But that was then. Is this for Barack Obama, his Vietnam now? Jane, what do you think? Well, it certainly is eerily similar. You, you think about the fall of Saigon and the North Vietnamese marched from city to city, from town to town. But it was there fast, Jane. If you remember, it, it was near very young. You weren't even born yet, so what do you know about it? Uh, I do remember in high you. school when this happened, it escalated so fast. We knew the Viet Cong were on the border. We knew that they were coming. But then before you know it, they were bordering, boarding helicopters and getting the hell out of Dodge. It was, it was fast. It was, but it, it, you heard the same thing, rumors of beheadings, um, all sorts of things were going on. And the, you know, Ford had a challenge of trying to make it look like he was supporting the South Vietnamese government, while at the same time thinking, how am I going to get all the Americans out of there? And of course, they did it with helicopters. And remember and what he said, Jim, there's not a damn thing I can do about this. And a lot of people criticized him as being impotent at the time, but he was just really kind of acknowledging the obvious. Did we want to send troops back in there? Did we want to go full throttle in there? Now, I'm not saying Iraq is Vietnam in that sense. And there is a difference between, you know, a president who was in this case trying to seek election. He was an appointed president. Let's remember that. Um, and, and this president who, who, who can't run for election again. I'm just wondering where you see the comparison to Barack Obama today. Well, I don't know that President Ford was off playing golf when all of this was unfolding. Um, Actually, he did play golf a lot. I don't know whether at this exact <laughs> moment. Right. Was he a good but golf? The, he was a good golfer, right? Okay, go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. He's a good athlete. But, you know, it's a very, I think it's very eerily similar. You know, we were war weary with the end of Vietnam in 1975. It had been, see, there were 58,000 deaths uh, associated with. Um, in Vietnam with Americans. And so it was just a terrible, terrible situation. People were tired. And that's the sentiment that Barack Obama ran on was, I'm going to get you out of Iraq and Afghanistan. Which is the sentiment he's running on now about not getting more deeply involved or even trying to block this too aggressively because we've had it. We've got war fatigue. Well, that's, we do. And the question yeah. is, what happens if Baghdad does fall to this group? They certainly don't look like the governing type. So, there you know, that. that's, yeah. <laughs> there, that's the biggest concern, I think, at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. It's always great having you, Jane Hampton Cook. Very good read on things. And she had a very good read on Mitt Romney, I remember, when he was running, that it was a, a limited campaign as far as appeal. Um, all right. When we come back here, Starbucks is.